Our Willa API is functional now, but I want to spend some time on DTOs. I have Willa DTO right now. If I open the Villa API, I am using Villa DTO for create, getting all the villas as well as update. But typically situation might be different. Like when we are creating, we do not need to pass the ID. When we update, we have the ID. And let's say when we are creating, we have some different validation. Like image, if they don't have when they create the villa, that's okay. But if they are updating the villa, we want the validation that image must be present. So realistically, it does not make sense to have one DTO for all the features. What will rather happen is we'll copy and paste that two times here. We will have Villa Create DTO, which will be for create, and we will have Villa Update DTO, which will be responsible for updating. Let's copy and make sure that is the exact class name as well. Perfect. Now in create, we do not need the ID here. And when we update, we do need the ID. That will be a required field. On top of that, let's say we have some more validation like occupancy, square feet and image URL are also required. So great. Now we have multiple DTOs in our website. Let's modify our API to handle those DTOs. We will first work on the create. There we do not need villa DTO. It will be a villa create DTO. When we retrieve that here, we are checking the name that looks good. But the ID we do not have to check anymore because that is not present. So we can comment that out. We do not need the ID here. And then we need the ID of the villa that is created. If you notice, we are passing this model when we are creating the villa. What Entity Framework Core does is once the villa is created, it will automatically populate the ID field inside this villa model. So the ID here will be populated inside model.id. And the model here, we can return that as well. Perfect. Create looks good. Delete should be good. We need to work on update. From body, we will get the villa update DTO. We convert that to villa and we update. Nothing to update there. We have the patch. The JSON patch document will be for villa update DTO as well. Once we retrieve the villa, we will convert that to villa update DTO, apply patch convert that to villa and update the request. Perfect. That looks good. So with that, we are using DTOs, which are different for create, update, and when we retrieve all the villas. With that in place, let me run the application and try to create. Let's hit execute here. And perfect. The ID 7 gets created here. So perfect. That is working as expected and we are using DTOs now. When we are working with Entity Framework Core, right now we are not using the async functions or async methods that are provided. We are using everything that is synchronous, but we can use the async features as well. In order to use, we have dot to list where we have dot to list async and when we use that we will just have to await here now when we await we will have to write async keyword in our method and the return type will be task of i action result everything will be wrapped up in a task like this that is the default syntax that we have to use when we are using async and await on any of the asynchronous call so let's modify all of the calls to be asynchronous. That is what Microsoft recommends as well. So we have first our default async and we will have to convert this to async task of I action result. We will await on the task here. That looks good. Let's scroll down. Let me copy async and task. 
and I will modify it in the other place. We have first our default async. We will have to await that and let's scroll down. When we are adding anything to the entity framework core, we have add async as well as save changes async. We will await on both of them. Delete villa. We will make that async task of i action result. We have the first or default async and let's await that. We will await on save changes. There we go. We do not have any remove async, so that's not needed. So perfect, delete looks good. Add async, that is also good. We await that. First or default here. First or default again and perfect. I feel like I'm missing something here. Let me make sure of that. We have the update here. We forgot that. We will await on the save changes. And we have update partial. Let me fix that. We will await on save changes. Perfect. So with that, all of the methods that we have, we are using async now and we have create and update DTO. Let's run the application and test everything before we proceed further. Get all is working. Post. Let's try that. Execute that. And perfect. That's coming along 201. Get. Let's try the ID8 here. That works. We scroll down. Let's try put here. Let me change everything here to 9. And execute that. Perfect. We get the 204 here. We go back. And great, we see 9. So that is also working. And let me try to patch ID8 path. I want to update the name here. Operation is replace. And value is 9 some things. Execute that. Let's go back. That is done. And we need to try delete here. We haven't tested that. Let's delete the ID 8. We get 204. We execute this and that is deleted. Perfect. So all the CRUD operations are working successfully using asynchronous calls. Our Villa API controller is looking good. But when we have to convert from one object to other, let me scroll down here, like right here. Right now we have like 7 or 8 properties. What if we have 50 properties? That will start getting super ugly and annoying to convert all of them in multiple places. For that we have something called as auto mapper. To install that, we will have to install the NuGet package for that. We will search for auto mapper here and we will install auto mapper. As well as we will install the dependency injection package. That way we can inject automapper and use that in our application. Perfect. So those two packages have been installed. Next we have to add automapper in our program.cs. When we add automapper, we want mapping that will map our villa to villa DTO, villa to villa create DTO, back and forth and so on. So rather than adding all of that logic in program.cs on what should be mapped to pair, we can create a mapping config file for that. So right here, let me right click, add a new class file. I will call that mapping config file. We know this will be used for auto mapper, so we can extend or inherit from profile, which is inside auto mapper, we will add that using statement. Now in order to do the mapping, let's add a constructor. Inside there we will create the mapping. 
to create mapping in AutoMapper, we have a method create map, and there we need to define what will be the source and destination. We want to map the villa model to villa DTL. We will add the using statement for both of them, and then we also need the reverse mapping for villa DTO to villa. So right here, we need villa DTO back to villa as well. AutoMapper is a very smart mapping. What it will do is as long as the ID or name of that variable is same, it will automatically map all of that. So right here, you can see ID, ID, details, details, amenity, amenity, all of those mappings will be done automatically. On top of that, if your requirement needs some custom mapping, you can always do custom mappings right here. To do that mapping, we have something called as for member, where we will define that for ID in Villa. We want that to be mapped to some other property in Villa DTO and so on. We will take a look at that later in the course if needed, but basic mapping works for now. We want to create one more mapping for Villa DTO to Villa Create DTO and reverse mapping as well. We have a shortcut for reverse map. If we write reverse map, we do not have to write it multiple times. Similar to that, we need to do that for Villa Update DTO. And this will be Villa, not Villa DTO. Perfect. Once we add that, we need to register this mapping in program.cs. So where we have builder.services, we will add one more service, which will be for auto mapper. And in this auto mapper, we need to pass the type of mapping config. That way, even if we have like 50 mappings, all of them can stay inside the mapping config file and we will add the using statement. Pretty simple and straightforward. Now we need to integrate AutoMapper in Villa API controller. Let's do that in the next video. We want to use AutoMapper inside the Villa API controller. We will be using that with dependency injection so we can inject the iMapper here. Let's call that as mapper and underscore mapper is equal to mapper. Then the first method that we have is get all villas. Here we are returning back villas, but the return type that we defined is villa DTO. So we need to map or rather convert that. Right here we have the i enumerable of villa and let me paste that here. Once we get the villa list, we need to convert that to villa DTO. So we can use underscore mapper dot map method. And there we need to define what should be the destination type. That is villa DTO. And here in the parameter, we need to pass the object, the object, which is villa list. That will automatically map things and return back. Perfect. That looks good. We have the get where we are returning villa DTO. So right here we will say underscore mapper dot map. We want to map that to villa DTO and our object is villa. Perfect. Next we have the create villa. If we scroll down here, we have to convert the villa create DTO into villa right here. To give this a meaningful name rather than villa DTO, I will call that create DTO. That way it will make more sense. Perfect. And here we need to do the conversion. We will say villa model is equal to underscore mapper dot map. The output should be villa. And the input here is the create DTO. That will do the mapping. We do not have to type this long piece of code. One line will replace it all. Perfect. Looks good. Let me copy this line. We'll move down. Delete villa. Nothing is needed. Update villa. We have to convert the update DTO to the villa model. Let me rename this again. We have the update DTO. 
and tag name will make more sense. Right. Now we need to comment this out. The output type is Willa. It converts that and perfect. That looks good. Let me remove everything that is commented out here and make our code much cleaner. We have the update partial where we have to convert Willa to Villa update DTO. Let's do that. Is equal to underscore mapper dot map. The output here will be Villa update DTO and the source is inside Villa. We don't need this. We can remove that now. And finally, we have to convert the Villa update DTO to Villa model. So let me copy this, paste it one more time here. This will be Villa model itself. We will call that model. The destination is Villa and the source here is Villa DTO. Perfect, that mapping looks good. We can remove this. So you can see AutoMapper makes it super easy where we had to write 10 lines of code and it is replaced by just one line. If your table had like 50 columns, that would be 50 lines that you would be mapping if you were not using AutoMapper. So with that in place, let me run the application and test that. So we will be trying the get here. Let me try get here. We scroll down and we have an error missing type map configuration or unsupported mapping. Let me see why that is. And of course, the output here we are saying we want to map this to a Villa DTO that is not valid. This should be a list of Villa DTO because Villa list is an I enumerable. Let me run that and try that again. Perfect, that works. Let me try posting one here. We get 201, that is perfect. Let's try to retrieve that. Great, that works. Let's try deleting. Before I delete that, let me try to update. Update the ninth one. And we will update with sevens here. Let me go back. Let me open SQL Server here. And yep, that looks good. Let me try to delete. We go back up and we try deleting. We get 204. And perfect, that is deleted. So with that, all the CRUD operations are working successfully while we are using AutoMapper and our code is much cleaner. Let's continue from the next video.